All right, so um, my buddy Patches asked me about heel hook defense, and honestly, I've been really, really influenced over like the last year by um, Seth Smith, who came down and did a seminar, and then Nikki Ryan and Ethan Crellinson, who came down and did a seminar. It was really fun to see those guys and, and how calm they are in their defense and see how much they can let people go after heel hooks and still be fine. So I just want to give those guys proper credit because I definitely wouldn't be anywhere near this understanding without them. And also Andrew Bittner has been helping me a ton. So thank you to all those guys. Um, so first of all, as Ian goes to the heel hook, and we're going to go on this outside heel hook first, it's really common. So what he's looking for is a couple different things. One, he needs to bite on the heel. So if you roll over just a little bit, you can see his arm is underneath my heel. We roll back. So he needs control of the heel. He needs my knee controlled by the knee line typically. And then ideally he wants to have a lock on the hip. So he wants everything kind of stabilized, exactly. So the first thing is when we get into these positions, right? Before he locks the heel hook, the first thing I can do is put my foot on the ground and stand up on it. So when I'm here, if I can keep my weight down, then as he tries to dig that heel hook up, as long as my heel stays down, we're fine. But this can't be the end all be all defense because all he's gotta do is off balance me a little bit and now my heel exposes and now he wraps. So now we better be ready. So one, using that heel and anchoring it to the ground can be really clutch. Two, is I'm not letting the knee line get controlled. And I noticed this a ton when I was going with like Nikki or Ethan, they just thought like my leg entanglements were a joke. So the second I would go to heel hook them, so I would dig the heel hook, they would extend their leg and just control their knee line. So the knee would be up and they would just sit back like this. And uh, as long as the knee doesn't turn in, then there's no heel hook. So if you're keeping your knee pointed against the way they want to bring your heel, your heel isn't able to rotate. So it's all about maintaining this knee joint flexibility. Or not knee joint flexibility, but really the rigidity of like your knee pointed out. Then as I start, so for whatever reason, either I'm late or he has a really good wedge pushing my toes back, now I'm gonna break my knee out of the knee line. So as we're going, and he's rolling for the heel hook, I've gotta pull this knee through. The second my knee hits the ground like this, I'm fine. Now I can step out and get right on the attack if I want. So three different looks, either getting heavy on the heel, controlling where our knee goes, but when it starts to turn, our knee escapes. So we're putting all these three together. Um, all of our defense, and this kind of goes across the board, but I always think about the you know military concept of any opponent who just digs in and has a static defense, they're gonna get destroyed eventually. They may, it may take you a lot of time, effort, and resources to beat them, but if they're dug in, in one spot, you're gonna beat them. But if they have a mobile defense, they can move forward and back and change directions and change angles, that's the kind of defense that can easily shut down anything over time and eventually transition to offense. So, military principles going across. But now, looking at 50-50, as a different situation. So now, there's a bunch of different ways that I can hide my feet. So I can cross at the toes. So you can see I put one toe over the other and flatten my feet together. So we're here, crossing at the toes. Either side comes over the top, right? Crossing at the ankles, either side goes over the top. Crossing in our triangle, either side can be over the top. So once again, this concept of mobile defense Every single time that Ian's trying to work and get to a lock, I just start shifting. And now you can see my feet are pushing his hands away and making it very difficult to attack. So just by moving my tactics, boom, 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 I'm making it very difficult to set in on one attack. And at the same time, I need to be looking for my opportunities. So you have to do this drill so much that you can fight off the hands with just your feet so that your hands can be free to attack. 
And if I have a credible threat, he's gonna have to bail first. So if you look at like the match in Polaris, where Rusumar Polaris won against Gary Tonin, they both had heel hooks, but Rusumar was the guy who had to bail out. If you're able to threaten, you can create an opportunity. So when we're in the heel hooks, we're just looking for shifting feet to give us that freedom. Um, the last thing is when Ian does get to the lock here. So he gets to the lock. I grab inside the arm and rear naked choke. Um, so I can grab here or just palm to palm choke grip. Either way. And this is something that Seth talked about. If I pull hard, he's going to break and reset. I'm going to fall back and now he gets me. So instead I have to be very sensitive. He locks in. I'm locked and I'm just hanging out, doing my thing. If he tries to break, so if he breaks on his own, then I break with him and I stay up, ready to play defense. And then right away I'm shifting again. So when we're playing, we're moving our feet, scraping everything off, keeping our feet heavy on the ground. We're keeping our knee angle extended and then we're breaking the knee line when we can. And as long as we're mixing all these concepts, you can get into a situation where it's very, very difficult to heel hook. I've started noticing more and more that you get two individuals who are savvy with leg locks, it's really hard for either one to get the finish. So as long as you have somebody you trust, you can practice this all day. And whenever you get to something that feels like check, you just tap and then let the other person work their way out of it. You know what I mean? So you're in the heel hook, you feel like it's done, you tap out, but then they slow down and you work a defense that's correct, and then you start reattacking the legs. So you can spend a lot of time working this with a partner you trust. So check it out, play around with it.